Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Now it's Sunday and uh, greetings sa ating mga kapatid dito sa Zoom at ganoon din po sa Facebook. At tuloy po tayo sa topic na ating din discuss. This is the part 3 of the message entitled Breaking Curses taken from the book of Dr. Francis Miles. Uh, last week, let's have a short review of what we have discussed last week. We understand that the word generation is a compound word made up of two very powerful English words. The one is gene. It means the basic unit of genetics in a living organism. And also ration. It means a portion designated to a person or group. Or it means to supply with a ration to limit or the specific allowance of something. So generation is a ration of genes. Okay. Next, the word curse is uh, meaning is something causing a misery or death, or they call it a hex or an evil spell, an appeal to some supernatural power to inflict evil on someone or some group. So based upon the above conjunction, we can come up with the following probable definition of a generational curse. So a general curse is what? An evil spell that is attached to a person, ration of genes, or a generational curse is an appeal <clears throat> to some supernatural power to inflict evil on a person or group. It is also mean a generational curse is something that causes misery or death that is attached to a person ration of genes. So therefore, a generational curse is a demonic phenomenon that transport demons and demonic tendency to the second generation through the ratio of genes that the second generation received from the first generations. That's why in Abinur's Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 5, that our iniquity has been what? The effect of the iniquity is from third to fourth generations. Because the enemy knows that if he attaches himself to the ration of genes, that were passing on to our children, he will be able to multiply his diabolical influence in our children and their children, children. Okay? So remember his plan. His plan is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The next word that we'll study last time is the word law. Right? The word iniquity in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, says, as I begin to, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. So that's the law. Nor serve them. For if I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the word iniquity there, in the praise, refers to the acts of lawlessness or an act against God. So, since God governs everything in creation and is the supreme law in creation, an iniquity has a far-reaching spiritual implication. Tandaan po natin, everything that God created, He has a law behind it. When He created the heavens, when He created the earth, there was a law, example, the law of gravity. When he created the heavens, there is also law. When he created the uh, Levitical priesthood, there was law behind it. So everything is what? Moved by law. So these iniquities that are command, committed by our forefathers against God's law opens the door for generational curses 
to succeed upon the future generations. So generation, generational curses are byproducts of violation against God's law. Nakuha po natin. So, in 1 Corinthians 15.56, let's see the dynamics of law. Sebron, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So, since generational curses are based upon the law of God, sin does not really exist where there is no law. Because it is the law that gives both the definition and the context of a crime. Okay? Gener generational curses would be useless if there is no law. Okay? Because the law is the strength of sin. But that's... But this does not mean that the law is sinful. But without it, sin would have no power. Now, on your po. Halimbawa, sa Pilipinas, meron tayong tinatawag sa constitution na political dynasty. Ibig sabihin nito ay merong yung asawa, pag natapos yung terms niya sa office, papalitan siya ng kanyang asawa, and then pagtatapos yung asawa, yun naman anak, papalit-palit lang sila. So ang tawag nila ng political dynasty. In the constitution, it was mentioned. But the constitution said that the Congress should pass an enabling law. So until there is a law that was enabled, walang violation ang sino mang pamilya na magpa-practice ang tinatawag ng political dynasty. Nakuha niyo po? Another example, owning a gun. In the Philippines, you know, uh, if you broke, bring a gun outside your house without a permit, pwede kang kasuhan ng illegal possession of firearms. But in other countries, it's legal to bring a firearms. Nakuha niyo po? So, it depends on the law. So a person found guilty of breaking one element of the law of God was guilty of breaking the whole law and came under curse. So Mr. James chapter 4. Now, you, you example, the Ten Commandments, you obey the nine and you miss one. Sabi ng Bible, you disobey all. Because the guilt Guilty of one, guilty of all. So, another word that we have discussed is the word lineage. Because general curses are based upon iniquities that have been taken place in a particular ancestral bloodline or lineage since the first ancestor. So, the word lineage is a consequence of a species that form a line of descent. Each new species is a direct result of formation of a new and dis distinct species from an immediate ancestral species. So, we say there is a lineage. We say that the mukha ang namamana mo or itsura ang namamana mo doon sa yung mga ninyo, no? including your behavior, including the sins of the forefathers that they have committed, you have a tendency to commit it. Example, King Ahaz was an idolater. And when his son rose up to power, King Hezekiah, he was so determined to destroy the idols. But there is a point in his life that he compromised and he also uh, give in to idols. So any generational curse is based upon the lineage of a person who is affected by the same. So yung gener generational curse ng ibang tao, hindi naman 
hindi ka man affected noon. Nakuha niyo po. You will only affected by the gener generational curse that is flowing in your bloodline. So, today, pag-aralan natin yung third part no breaking of curses the first thing that we need to study today is what we call inheritance law okay mana okay and sabi roon then god gave the people all this instruction i am the lord your god who rescued you from the land of egypt the place of your slavery you must not have any other god but me you must not make yourself an idol or of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. So I lay the sin of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even the children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. Exodus 21 to 5. So inheritance law is the only law in the spirit world and in the natural world that controls the passage of property or genetics from one family member to another. So inheritance law. So kapag uh, namatay magulang mo, Whatever they have, they will be passed to you. Mana. Okay? So, hindi lang yung mga physical ang ipinamamana. Even the spirit, in the spirit world, meron din siyang ano, ipinapasa. Okay? Even the passage of curses is also happens through this inheritance law. That's why probate courts deal with inheritance issues. So pag may mga nag, may issue sa mga mana, dadali mo ngayon saan? Sa probate court. Now, meron din talaga inheritance law in genetics. It was uh, discovered by, there is what you call Mendelian inheritance. Okay? or a Mendelian genetics or Mendelism. It is a set of primary tenets relating to the transmission of hereditary characteristic from one parent organism to their offspring. Kaya po, pag kayo pumunta sa doktor, may sakit kayo, ang unang tinatanong ng doktor ay kung ito ay God, kung meron ka mag-anak ka na merong ganito sakit. They were initially derived from the work of Gregor Mendel, published in 1865 and 1866, which was rediscovered in 1900 and was initially very controversial. When they were integrated with a chromosome theory of, of inheritance by Thomas Hunt Morgan in 1915, 15, they became the core of classical genetics. Now, heredity is the passing of traits to offspring from its parent or ancestor. Now it's been proven because of the modern medicine, the discovery of DNA, it, is, it has been one. Uh, discovered yung uh, tungkol dito sa genetics. Okay. There is the process, this is the process by which an offspring cell or organism acquires or become predisposed to the characteristic of its parent cell or organism. Uh, may isang study na ginawa bakit daw ang mga lolo or lola ini-spoil nila ang kanilang mga apo 
I heard a story of a of a daughter na napansin niya nung siya nagkaroon ng anak. Ang tatay niya sobrang engrossed dun sa apo. To the point siya ang nag-aalaga dun sa apo. And the daughter said, bakit ganyan yung tatay namin? Eh, no, kami maliliit pa, ni hindi nga nag-alaga yan. Ni hindi nga nagpapalit ng lampi yan. Now, in the study of genetics, they found out na yung DNA pala ng tatay, hindi 100% na ipamamana doon sa anak. Ito ay naipamamana 100% doon sa kanyang apo. That's why every time they saw the apo, they saw themselves. Nakikita nila yung mga sarili nila at sasabihin na, Uy, kamukha ako talaga. Nakuha niyo po. So that is the meaning of heredity or others or hereditary. The work of Gregor Mendel and Thomas Hunt in the field of genetic is unbeatable. This true billion genetic scientist that, ha- that has helped us to know for certain that genes are responsible for much of the transmission of hereditary characteristic from parent organism, organism to their offspring. That's why nalaman natin na yung mga strand ng ating DNA na andoon yung ano, ating profile, yung ating personality, including yung ating sin. And this thing has been transferred, na itatransfer, kaya may kasabihan tayo, like father, like son. So it is clear then that inheritance law governs the transfer of gene from one generation to the next. So the transfer of gene to the next uh, generation, ang tawag doon, inheritance law. Okay? So the transmission of hereditary characteristic from parent organism to their offspring is based upon what? The ration of genes or generations that are transmitted from one generation to another. So we cannot overturn generational curses and genetic anomalies without first breaking the power of the inheritance law that governs that lineage. Nakuha niyo po? There is a legal requirements. You have to break the power of the inheritance law. Yan po ang susi. Since generational curses are based upon iniquities that are attached to the ration of genes that a person inherited from their natural bloodline, we have to find a way to legally release people from their compromised ration of genes or uh, genetic mutations. Kasi po nung nagkasa, tandaan po natin, nung nilika ng Diyos ang tao, Adam and him, Eve has a perfect genes or DNA. And in their DNA, nakasulat po doon ang destiny, ang purpose ni Lord. That's why, bago pa sila magkasala, actually, they don't need a prophet or an external stimuli na magtutulak sa kanila para sumunod sa Diyos. It's their in DNA. And this thing that happens when man fell to sin, hindi lang uh, nagkasala, but it affects their genes. Yung prophetic DNA nila na sonship or anak na wala. Kaya di ba sabi pa sa Bible, for all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. It was the glory of the Lord that departed. Ikamud, sabi sa Hebrew, umalis, nawala. Nakuha niyo po. So, if we want to break the curses in our blood bloodline, we need to find a legal way. Kasi, yung generational curses is being uh, there is a law behind it 
ang tawag doon inheritance law. Example, a Filipino citizen becomes an American citizen and after taking a note, he received all the rights and privileges of an American citizen. Ah, kaya yung ibang mga Pilip- kababayan natin sa Amerika, uh, bakit nila dinidesire ang mabuhay doon sa uh, sabi yan, land flowing with milk and honey. Especially yung mga matatanda, ay nila bumalik dito. Bakit? Kasi doon libre ang hospitalization nila at iba pang mga benefits. Okay? So by becoming an American citizen, he had legally excused himself from being a Filipino citizen. Oh. Nakuha niyo? So the same dynamics of inheritance law to cut off all the generational curses that have been attached to us because of our natural bloodlines. That's why nung naborn again tayo, ano ang sabi ng Biblia? You become what? Citizen of heaven. Why it is important for us to become citizen of heaven? It is because of this inheritance law. If we have legally denounced our allegiance to them, in order to embrace our citizenship in the kingdom of God, so ano mangyayari? You are a citizen from this country to that country. From this kingdom to this kingdom. That's why ang tawag sa atin, you are born again. Oh, you are a new creation. So when God said you are a new creation, It was your DNA that he transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Another thing that inheritance law can be applied is in marriage. Kaya sabi ng Genesis 2.24, Genesis This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Diba sabi ng Genesis 2.24? Marriage is the best example of the power and the inner workings of the law of inheritance. Marriage can change a person's social and economic status in a single day. Like for example, a poor, a poor girl, Maria Reyes, marry a rich man, Johnny Cruz, a billionaire. After her marriage to Mr. Johnny Cruz, is Maria Reyes still poverty stricken or she is a billionaire? I tell you, she is a billionaire. Why? Anybody who understands how inheritance law works in marriage know that when she married Mr. Johnny Cruz, everything he owned became her property. Diba? Tawag doon, conjugal property. Even the change in name from Maria Reyes to Maria Cruz was a guarantee that her fortunes had changed dramatically. Kaya pati apelyedo niya, binabago niya. Nakuha niyo po? So, the same thing that happens when we were born again, we get marriage to Christ. Look at Ephesians 5, 31 to 33. A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. See? In Ephesians chapter 5, Jesus is not talking about early marriage, uh, earthly marriage or natural marriage. He only used the natural marriage or the earthly marriage of a man and a woman to explain to us the marriage of the church and Christ. Kaya sabi niya, so again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So if the above allegorical story has any validity, validity concerning the dynamic of inheritance law within the institution of marriage, then we have un- untied the mystery to breaking generational curses permanently. 
Kasi nga po, hindi yan makukuha basta prayer lang. You need to understand how this generational curses operates. And there is a law behind general curses and that is the law of inheritance. And in order to break that law of inheritance, you need to what? To enter into marriage. Nakuha niyo po? Because instead of trying to fix our old sin compromise and broken down lineage, we must allow our marriage to Christ to alter our inheritance. So the only way to break the curse is what? Revelation and understanding and faith that when we got born again, we were married to Christ. Nakuha niyo po? Our marriage to Christ then afford us the legal grounds for demanding our complete liberty from all the generational iniquities attached to our natural lineages. Because in our natural lineages, na ando, hindi talaga yung matatanggal. Because there is an inheritance law. Binaanam mo yan eh. Oh. And the only way para matanggal yung mana na yun, kinakailangan maputol yung lineage. Nakuha niyo po? And the only way it can be cut off is when we are married to Jesus Christ. The Bible is clear that Jesus Christ was the perfect balance of humanity and divinity. Tingnan niyo po. In His divinity, di ba pangalan niyo? Jesus Christ. Yung Christ hindi niya apelyedo yun. It means His divinity that is Christ. It means it has no earthly genealogy. Di ba napag-usapan natin last time? When Jesus was born by virgin, hindi naman siya naapektuhan ng blood ni Mary. Okay? Because according to science, pag ang baby ay nasa sinapupuna na, walang dugo ng babae, ng nanay, ang napupunta doon sa ano? Sa bata. The baby is being fed through the placenta. Nakuha niyo po? Yun ang nagpifed sa kanya ng, ng pagkain na kailangan niya. But the blood is not. So the, that's why Jesus has no earthly genealogy that can hold him to the past. And in his humanity, he represents total genetic perfection. That's why I'm tawag sa kanya, the last Adam and the second man. Adam and Jesus Christ is the perfect human being. Nakuha niyo po. So si Adam, bago nagkasala, he is the perfect human being. He has a perfect genetic or genes. So in his humanity, he had a bloodline that was a reservoir of genetically and spiritually flawless DNA. In his humanity, that's why. Hindi naman siya napektuhan ng dugo ng bloodline ni Mary. That's why he has what a perfect DNA. So in marrying him, Mary in Christ, we inherit both his lack of a traceable human genealogy that general curses can be attached to and his enduring righteousness. That's why when we got born again, ang sabi ng Biblia, we become righteous. That's the mystery that happens when we get born again. The general curses was cut. Why? You are married to Christ. The inheritance law was ano, broken. In marrying him, we also inherit his genetically and spiritually perfect DNA. That's why it says in First John chapter four, you have the seed of Christ, the seed of God. That seed, in Greek, is sperma. There we get the word sperm. So we have the seed of God in us. Kaya tayo ay hindi dapat nagkakasala. Di ba? We already have the seed of Christ, which in turn becomes superimposed over our broken down or destroyed genetics. Eh, Pastor, bakit hindi pa rin nangyayari sa akin? It requires faith and revelation 
kung ano yung ginawa ni Kristo doon sa Cruz na Calvary. And I'm sharing this thing to you so that you can see the detail of the mystery of the blood, what the blood did to us. So the placement of His divinity on our humanity provide us with a release papers from any kind of generational curse. Hallelujah. That's why sabi ni Lord, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the only hope for us to be glorified, to be like Jesus, no other else. Wala na pong iba. Not even our own righteousness can do that. Hindi po. So the placement of His perfect humanity over, over our broken humanity provide us with the antidote that we need to heal every genetic anomaly in our life. Naniniwala ako ito. This one is a process. It is not a one-time, big time. Or it is not a, you know, isang buhos lang. No, it is a process. Now, what happened is there was what we call supernatural genetic reconfiguration. When you get born again, when the blood washes your DNA, and when you get married to Christ, there was what? A genetic reconfiguration. Genetic engineering is actually the alteration of genetic code by artificial means. Kaya meron tayo mga, uh, mga pagkain or mga uh, halaman na ang tawag nila GMO. Kaya ang tawag nila genetically modified organism. Okay? And this is therefore different from what? traditional selective breeding. So God is able to heal, restore and reconfigure mankind's broken down genetics. And God is able to overturn and repair any kind of demonic genetic mutation inside inside the human genome. Kaya niyang baguhin yan. Okay? Because Jesus has what? A perfect DNA. That's the power of the blood. So when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you believe what He has done on the cross of Calvary, that blood cleanses your what? Genes. Before genetic scientists and forensic pathologists discovered the phenomenon known as genetic injury, God revealed this technology to, serve, to his servant Jacob. Nalala nyo? Si Jacob. God showed him how to manipulate the genetics of the animal that he was shepherding. So, di ba sabi niya, ito yung kwento. Sabi ni Laban, what wages do you want? Jacob replied, don't give me anything. Just do this one thing. And I'll continue to tend and watch over your flock. Let me inspect your flock today and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled or spotted along with all the black sheep. Give this to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have been given me as my wages, you will see that I have been honest. If you find my flock any goats without speckles or spot or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen from you. So, parang nagkaroon sila ng deal. Sabi niya, ang ibigay mo na lang sa akin ay yung ano, may spotted. Eh, alam ni Laban, nakukunti lang yung spotted na yun. Kaya siya pumayag. And it will be, uh, sabi niya, but that very day, Laban went out and removed the male goats that were strict and spotted. All the female goats that were speckled or spotted or had white patches and all the black sheep. He placed them in the care of his own sons who took them a three days journey from where Jacob was. So, inalis sa kanya yung ano, mga spotted. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga susunod na spotted na ibibreed nitong mga ipapanganak nitong mga white na ito is what? Kanya. Okay? So, meanwhile, Jacob stayed and cared for the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plain trees, and peeled off, stripped off bark 
making white streak on them. Then he placed the spilled branches in the watering troughs where the flock came to drink, for that was where they made them. So when they made them in front of the white streak branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. See, it is the Lord who gave him that uh, wisdom. Oh, this is a way to what? To reconfigure the genes of the animals. So Jacob separated those lambs from Laban's flock, and at the mating time, he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. See, this is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban's. So whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peeled branches in the watering, watering troughs in front of them, and they would, they would mate in front of the branches, but he didn't do this with the weaker ones. So the weaker lambs belong to Laban. So, and the stronger ones were Jacob's. As a result, Jacob became very wealthy with large plum and sheep and goats, male and female, servants and many camels and donkey. So, even said before, genetic engineering discovered the artificial uh, breeding. It was... <clears throat> being uh, revealed to Jacob. After 20 years of working for his uncle actually and his father-in-law who named Laban, Jacob was still living in abject poverty. Kaya naisip niya ito. Sabi niya, ako'y tatagal <coughs> sa father-in-law ko. <coughs> Sigurado, pobre pa rin ako. And is depressed and disturbed by his personal lack of financial achievement. So Jacob asked his father-in-law to let him go and back to his father's country. So balit si Laban, ayaw niyang pakawalan si Jacob because he is a productive employee. And Jacob told his father-in-law that he would work for him for a couple more years for a condition that he would allow Jacob to take as his wages his spotted animals that came out as offspring of one colored animals. Alam yun niya, no? Ni um, Laban, na hindi pwedeng manganak ng spotted yung colored animals. O yung white. O hindi yan pwedeng manganak ng, ng spotted. Parang uh, yung Amerikano na puti. Pagkatapos gusto mo magkaroon ng anak na ano na black parang ganoon ang gusto mo mangyari so he was sure that Jacob was going to be working for him for the rest of his life dahil sabi niya hindi mangyayari na ikaw ay yayaman sa ganyan mong uh, uh, parang deal mo sa akin so Jacob told Laban that he wanted him to take every animal among his livestock that was spotted in any form or fashion and removed them far away from Jacob. Kaya yung mga inaalagan niyang spotted, sabi niya, alisin mo na yan. Kasi baka dumating yung time, ako saan ba ako lang nakakaw sa iyo? Okay? So, this meant that Jacob would only be taking care of animals that had one full color. Kung hindi. Di ba? So he told his father-in-law that it would come to pass that any one colored animal that produced spotted offspring would belong to Jacob. Kaya pag yung mga one colored animal, pag nanganak ito ng spotted, kanya ito. Oh. So he had no idea that the God of Abraham and Isaac had given Jacob a revolutionary scientific business idea. It came from the Lord. So what Jacob was suggesting was synonymous to asking a black couple to give birth to a white baby. Okay? So in Laban's mind and the intellectuals of his day, Jacob's decision doomed him to life of poverty and servitude. Sigurado maghihirap siya dahil imposible mangyari yan. Laban was no scientist but he knew that what Jacob was suggesting was impossible. Kaya diba, one time during the mating season, 
I had a dream and saw that male goats mating with the females were strict speaking and spotted. Then in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, and I replied, yes, here I am. The angel said, look up and you will see that only the strict speckled and spotted males are mating with the females of your flock. For I have seen how Laban has treated you, for I am the God who appeared to you at Bethel and place you were anointed place where you anointed the pillar of stone and made you your and made your bow to me now get ready and leave this country and return to the land of your birth see there was a supernatural genetic reconfiguration on those animals so central that happens to us when we got born again there was what a supernatural genetic reconfigurations. The Bible says that Jacob went and cut fresh branches from a tree, then took a knife and cut white spot on all the branches. And Jacob intersected these branches that he had created, and it came to pass, and whenever, whenever any one of the strong, one-colored livestock began mating, Jacob placed the photo of crisscross branches in front of them you know what happens in their brain brain scientists found out that in a highly emotional situa situation like that in a mating stage the reticular probation part of the brains opens up and any image that goes into the brain during such moment has a brain and genetic altering effect. Nagkakaroon ng ano? Altering effect. So to everyone's amazement, one colored sheep and one colored oxen all began to produce offspring that were spotted. See? Supernatural. Now, let's go now to how to generational, how to stop generational curses permanently. Sabinando, I might also have confidence in the flesh, said Paul, if any other man thinking that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning seal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do not count them but them that I may win Christ. So Paul's definition of the word flesh is very, very different to what most of us could consider flesh. Most believers were confused. The works of the flesh that Paul listed in the fifth book of Galatians with the word flesh that he mentioned in Philippians 3, 4 to 8. Magkaiba po yung works of the flesh at saka itong flesh na ito. According to Philippians 3, 4 to 8, the flesh and the works of the flesh are not the same. The works of the flesh are like the fruit of the tree, whereas the flesh is the root system of the tree. That's why the only way you can change the fruit is you change the root. There is a saying, you change the root, you change the fruit. This means that you can never change the fruit of any tree if you are willing to change the root. Okay? This is because the life of any tree is found in its root system. So yung minimension ni Paul sa Philippians 3, 4 to 8 is the roots. The root system. And in Galatians chapter 5, that is what? The fruit or the works of the flesh. Sabi ni Paul, 
Paul lists the following things that he considered to be flesh. His pride over being circumcised the eighth day. Diba? This represents a religious pride. His pride at being of the stock of Israel. Or he belongs to a nation of, nation of Israel. This represents the pride of nationality. Next, his pride of being the tribe of Benjamin. This represents tribal pride. Diba? His pride at being a Hebrew of the Hebrews. So this represents family ancestry. His religious fervor as touching the law, a Pharisee. So what is this? This represents the pride of social status. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. This represents religious zeal. Without knowledge, then touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Yes, why is blameless? Because he strictly followed the law. So what is that? This represents self-righteousness. So everything the, the, that apo, the Apostle Paul lists above are the very things that most believers, including us, fight to maintain. We want to maintain this, this kind of pride. Yeah. Pride, religious pride, pride of nationality, the tribal pride. Oh, di ba? Bisaya ako, Bicolano ako, di ba? Tagalog ako, di ba? The pride of ancestry, the pride of social status, di ba? So, for instance, being proud that you are a Baptist, or a Charismatic, or a Pentecostal, or a Methodist, di ba? At the expense of what you are in Christ is an example of religious pride. We are not Baptist, we are not Charismatic, we are not Pentecostal, we are not Methodist. We are sons of God. That is our identity. That is our prophetic DNA. Sonship. You are sons of God. And the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul calls such religious pride as what? Flesh. So everything that the Apostle Paul lists is historically what has led to many wars and cultural divides over many centuries. Yung sinabi ni Paul na yung that the one that divides the nations. Not only the nations but congregations, churches. And it is, also, it is available to every human being apart from Christ. So this pride is available to all human beings. Nawawala lang yan kapag you are one. You become one with Christ. So but it is not possible for us to be separate permanently from generational curses and genetic anomalies if we are too proud of who we are in the natural apart from who we are in Christ. So if we are very proud that of these things that we have, we will fail to be, to be separate permanently from these general curses. Di ba ano sabi ni Paul? I like to go back. Sabi niya, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For I have suffered the loss of all things he lost it. He let it go. This pride. Nakuha niyo po? At sabi pa niya, and I count them but dung. Oh, itinurin ko silang ano? Basura. O oh, tain ng hayop. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng dung. So that, sabi niya, that I may win Christ. In other words, you do not want to be in Christ what you are already in the natural. So, what Paul is saying, that pride that is in the natural, 
So if you're in Christ, dapat wala na yung mga bagay na yun. And yet, if we do not come a loss everything that we were before, God placed us in Christ, we can never find a complete freedom that we seek from general curses. So we have to let it go. That is the key. You have to let it go. What you already are in the natural ongoing and permanent freedom from generational curses and genetic anomalies will escape us if we do not stop worshipping who we are in the natural. That's why right, we discussed to you last time about idolatry. If we don't stop worshipping who we are in the natural. That's why for me, the greatest doctrine in the New Testament is Colossians 2.27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So giving up our allegiance to our corrupted, genetically compromised lineages to embrace Christ's bloodline should be an easy choice. But the truth is, it's hard for us to let it go. Diba? Now, how are we going to overturn the power of the inheritance law? Look at this in Romans chapter 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How the law had dominion over a man as long as he lived. For the woman which had an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lived. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lived, she married to another man, she'll be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law. So, she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, <coughs> that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God, Romans 7, 14. So how can we be set free from the tyranny of generational curses and genetic anomalies? We have to overturn the power of the inheritance law over our lives. At sinabi ni Paul, na ano, that the law has dominion over a person as long as he or she lives. And a woman with a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. So, kinumpara ni Lord na tayo daw po, habang tayo nabubuhay, the law has dominion over our life. Remember? That the sting of death is what? Is sin. And sin is without the law ay walang kasalanan. Okay? Kaya sabi ni Lord, so yung, yung babae, hanggat buhay ang kanyang asawa, he is bound by the law to her husband. So pag nag-asawa siya ng iba, he will be accused of adultery. Pero kung mamamatay yung asawa, if the husband dies, the woman is lost from the law of her husband. So while her husband is still living, a woman who marries another shall be called adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is free to marry another. So, anong ginawa ni Jesus Christ? Sabi sa Romans 7, Born again believers have died to their first husband. When Jesus died, we died. Bakit tayo ginawa ni Lord na namatay kasama niya? So that we can marry to another husband. And that is Christ. Nakuha niyo po? So, Born again believers have died to their first husband. That is the old nature and it's dead. That's the law. In order to marry Christ. And the Bible calls it the flesh or the old man. So while we were married to our old nature, the law of sin and death, yan ang sabi ng Bible, had complete dominion over us. Coincidentally, the law of sin and death is same law 
that governs every life form in the universe that is under the power of sin. This means that the law of sin and death is the primary law that governs generational curses and genetic anomaly. Yan yung sinasabi ni Paul sa law of sin and death na may mga bagay kung mabubuti na gusto gawin, hindi ko magawa. Subalit may mga masasama ako, ayaw kong gawin, pero yun ang nagagawa ko. Sabi niya, hindi, hindi na ako ito. But the sin that is in me, that is the law of sin and death. So, anong ginawa ni Lord? Kasama niya tayong pinatay. When Christ died on the cross, kasama kang namatay. When He rose from the dead, kasama kang nabuhay so that you can marry to another man. So, for as long as we stay married to our first husband, the old man and his deed, or the law of sin and death, will continue to have dominion over us. So, it requires faith and revelation. Because the word dominion means to rule over something. So, this law of sin and death is what? Ruling us kahit kristyano na rin tayo. Why? Because it all. This thing only come by what? By believing. Everything that we were apart from Christ, which include our natural lineage, is part and parcel of our own unregenerated nature. Hindi ba sabi ko sa inyo yung kasalanan? Di ba? It's there in our DNA. That's part of our natural lineage. So the only way to cut the power, the inheritance law, is you need to marry to another one, to another husband. Kaya, sinabi ni Lord sa Ephesians chapter 5, di ba? That a man will leave his father and mother and join to his, and become one. Pero sabi, I'm referring to the believers who married the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is clear that we cannot be married to two husbands at the same time. Kailang may, kailang mamatay. So, many believers, for, for the most part, are guilty of committing spiritual adultery because they constantly flip-flop between walking in the Spirit and walking in the flesh. So, marriage of Christ is our freedom. Di ba sabi niya? Sabi niya, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. So when Jesus died, you die. Para no daw, so that you should be married to another, even to him who raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So kinon from it to me, Paul, that, we were, we, that every believer becomes, uh, we're married to the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga ang tawag sa atin na, ano, Bride of Christ. The solution to our complete deliverance which can overturn and reverse the power of the inheritance law in our favor it stares us in the face. It's in our face lang. Kaso lang hindi natin makita. Our marriage to Christ offer us the ultimate solution. So if we choose to put to death our old nature or our first husband, the institution of marriage is the fastest way to change the inheritance of any human being. Diba? Na-explain ko sa inyo kanina na a woman or a man may be living in abject poverty but should she marry or she marry a rich spouse, she immediately become a well, become wealthy from the moment she say, I do. Nakawal niyo po? That is because of the inheritance law. So if we die to the flesh, which our first husband, the law of sin and death, has no more power over us. Why? Because you are married to a new husband. We are free to marry another. And that another in that passage in Romans chapter 7 is Jesus Christ. So therefore, you have to denounce it. So meron kang gagawin. Prophetically, you need to denounce your natural lineage. Ano, Pastor? Ikakatuwa ko ang aking mga ninuno. Anong ibig mong sabihin? 2 Corinthians 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things has passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Philippians 3, 7 But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So how do we benefit from, from the, the benefit the most from our marriage to Christ? Paano natin makukuha yung benefits nung ating nangyari na yun eh, nung tayo ay tuanggap sa Panginoon. We were married to Christ. But tandaan niyo po, everything in the Spirit is what? By faith. So if you're not going to exercise or believe by faith, the benefits of those things that Jesus Christ, that uh, Jesus did on the cross of Calvary will be useless if you will not apply faith on it. Nakuha niyo po? So, kaya nga nasa harapan na lang mukha natin yun eh. Yung solusyon. Hindi lang natin maintindihan. So, to benefit the most from our union with Christ, we must do the very single woman does when she get married. Ano yun? She legally and joyfully denounce her last name. Nakuha niyo po? The maiden name or lineage in a public ceremony in order to take on her husband's name or lineage. Diba? Sa pagkasal, sinasabi, Oh, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Cruz or Kennedy or sino man yun. When I got married, my wife loses her lineage and it was, he has been transferred to my lineage. And then the crowd of witnesses cheers and no one at that wedding ceremony mourns the loss of the woman's last name because it was to be expected. Walang nalulukod doon na iiyak na wala na yung pangalan niya. Oh, it is already lost. Question, why does the body of Christ hang on their old name or old nature? even though they are now married to Christ. Ignorance. God wants us to take His bride, the bride of Christ, through a spiritual ceremony of renunciation. Gusto nila ang dalhin niya. And we're going to pray this morning. And we will ask God to renounce yung ating natural lineage so that our spiritual lineage will be the one that will take effect in our uh, DNA. So in this ceremony, God's people get an opportunity to legally denounce their allegiance to their natural lineage. Remember, the natural lineage is the natural So in order to embrace their full inheritance as the bride of Christ, because all generational curses and genetic anomalies are based upon our father and mother's bloodlines. So, ano ginagawa mo? So, when you pray this prayer, you're cutting it off. Naalala nyo? It makes the order of Melchizedek very valuable to humans who are challenged by demonic interference in compromised bloodlines. Why? Because Jesus, who is a priest, who is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, ay walang ano, human genealogy. Oh. So that's why when we become priest after the order of Jesus Christ, that's what God will do to us. He's going to cut our natural lineage. His divinity has no genealogy. Then in His humanity, Yeshua, has genetically flawless bloodline. Okay? So our marriage to Christ is the antidote that will set us free from the poison of demonic influence in our bloodline. But we cannot enjoy this incredible blessing if we are unwilling to denounce our natural lineage in favor of Christ's Melchizedek priesthood. Tandaan niyo po. Si Melchizedek sa Old Testament, sabi niya is what? He has no human genealogy. 
Okay? Now, Jesus became the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And explain nothing, you know, na he has a perfect or genetically flawless bloodline. His divinity has no human genealogy. That's why he is the perfect man. So we must be willing to denounce our allegiance to our natural bloodlines in order to inherit the genetically flawless bloodline of our Lord Jesus Christ. John 6.42 And they said, Is not Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is, how is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? See? Even the people during the time of Jesus did not know him. Remember John the Baptist? John the Baptist is his cousin. At I believe, kalaro niya itong bata na ito hanggang sila'y lumaki. And one day, the Lord gave John the revelation of who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. Kaya siguro sabi ni John kay Jesus, Pinsan, Ikaw pala yung misaya. Bakit di mo sinabi sa akin? Oh, di ba? And I believe he was surprised. Because when he saw the Spirit descending upon Jesus, it confirms that he is the Son of God. Oh. But I to believe itong magpinsa na ito, magkalaro ito hanggang lumaki sila. Oh. So the people have to renounce their allegiance to their fathers and mothers' lineage. Ano ibig sabihin ito? Denouncing our natural lineage in order to embrace his solely prophetic bloodline does not translate into denouncing our commitment and love for the families to whom he has blessed us. Okay? Don't get me wrong. When we make a prayer like this, denouncing our natural lineage, it doesn't mean that you are what? Denouncing your commitment and love for your family. No. What we are only, this is a spiritual act of denunciation actually, elevates us to become a kingdom ambassador. It brings us to our natural family to become a kingdom ambassador to our natural family members. You become the ambassador because remember that sabi niya, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thy household will be saved. And if you want your family to be saved, you have to stand up. Like Gideon, the greatest battle that Gideon fought is what? Is destroying the altar of his own father, the evil altar in his bloodline. Because his father is a high priest of Baal. Now all of us that born again, our family is not yet born again. Oh, we become what? a kingdom ambassador for them. Oh. So what do you call an official who represents his government on a foreign soil? Di ba ang tawag doon? Ambassador. Kaya ang tawag sa atin ng Lord ano? Ambassador. Oh. An ambassador is the only person who can live on a foreign soil and completely immune to the threats that reside in that country. Kaya meron siya tinatawag na diplomatic immunity hindi siya pwedeng hulihin. Nakuha niyo po? Because he is an ambassador. Oh. If you choose to become an ambassador of the kingdom to our families, God will make sure that we are immunized from any generational curses and genetic anomalies that may be running rampart in our natural family. Yun lang ibig sabihin nun. Ikakat yung generational curses that is flowing down in your family line. Amen? And because of that, you will become what? An ambassador of the kingdom of God. Let us now come before the Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. Allow Him to 
speak to us. Heavenly Father, I stand in your royal courtroom to receive your righteous judgment over my bloodline inheritance. Heavenly Father, I call upon your holy angels to be witnesses to this legal and righteous transaction. I also declare that all demonic powers that have been attached to the bloodlines of my natural ancestors will respect and honor your righteous judgment over my genetic inheritance. Heavenly Father, your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, forgive me for worshiping my family ancestry instead of giving it up for the sake of Christ my Lord. Heavenly Father, so this time I want you to replace your surname. You said you denounce whatever surname you have. Okay. I am willingly and joyfully denounce Vargas lineage. Denounce your own. Put your surname there. I denounce the lineage that this name represents and all the demonic technologies and iniquities that are attached to it throughout the timeline of this lineage. I give it up to possess Yeshua's holy and flawless prophetic bloodline. Jesus' genetic inheritance is now my inheritance. Heavenly Father, now let's go to the mother's maiden name. Mention it. I willingly and joyfully denounce Kubinar lineage. I denounce the lineage that this name represents and all the demonic technologies and iniquities that are attached to it throughout the timeline of this lineage. I renounce my allegiance to this lineage in order to possess Yeshua's holy and flawless prophetic bloodline. Now, we're going to pray. This is only for the married women who are listening right now. You pray this next paragraph. Okay? For the married woman, you must insert your husband's last name here with the word lineage attached to it. Okay? Go, Heavenly Father, I willingly and joyfully denounce, may mention the surname of your husband or the last name of your husband. I denounce the lineage that this name represents and all the demonic technologies and iniquities that are attached to it. Throughout the timeline of this lineage, I renounce my allegiance to this lineage in order to possess Yeshua's holy name, flawless, prophetic bloodline. Now, this is only for those who never knew their biological par parents. So if you, are, if you don't know your biological parents, you can pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I do not know my bio biological parents. Even though I bear their genetic inheritance, but you know my biological parents. Therefore, I trust you to free me from any iniquity attached to my bio biological parents' lineage. Heavenly Father, I am willingly and joyfully denounce the lineage that their name represents and all the demonic technology and iniquities that are attached to their bloodline. 
and throughout the timeline of their lineages. I renounce my allegiance to these lineages in order to possess Yeshua's holy and flawless prophetic bloodline. Heavenly Father, I willingly and joyfully denounce all superimposed DNA arising from witchcraft, sexual assault, blood transfusions, trauma, sexual immorality, adoption, rejection, or mind control. I strongly denounce all the demonic technologies and iniquities that are attached to this superimposed DNA throughout the timeline of this lineage. I renounce any allegiance to this superimposed DNA in order to possess Yeshua's solely and flawless prophetic DNA. Heavenly Father, I also beseech you to deliver me permanently from all generational curses in my bloodline by superimposing Yeshua's flawless prophetic bloodline over me. Thank you for healing me from any and all genetic deficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us now come to our uh, communion. If you have no communion in your with you, let us pray. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when given time, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You cannot take the bread. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord that until He comes. Amen. Thank you, Paul. God bless you, Paul. Uh, by the way, I'm out of town. I, I did this recording for all of us this Sunday morning. Let us now give our offering and remember that the offering that we gave unto the Lord is it has a voice in heaven it has a voice it speaks that's why it is a memorial offering it speaks before the Lord it's a memorial remember Cornelius dumating yung angel he's an unbeliever Sabi ng Bible, because of your uh, alms and prayers, it becomes a memorial before the Lord. Ang ibig sabihin nun, someone is speaking or something is speaking in heaven. So every time you gave your offering, your tithes, your alms, whatsoever, your offering unto the Lord, it speaks in heaven. It speaks for you. It's a witness in heaven of your faithfulness unto the Lord. Amen. So let us now uh, give our tithes and our offering unto the Lord.
Thank you Lord at thank you sa lahat ng mga nakinig dito sa Zoom at sa ating pong uh, Facebook Live. Thank you very much and see you next Sunday and we will continue to uh, study this breaking of curses next Sunday. God bless you and good day sa inyo pong lahat.